Hi, my name is Dr. Rob Rosbrook, and I'm from the Hospital for Special Surgery. I wanted to talk to you today about the surgical realignment of knock knee or genovalgum. Um, knock knee, like bow leg, is a deformity of the lower extremity that creates uh, abnormal stress on the knee, leads to arthritis in the knee, often places abnormal stress on the hip and the ankle as well. It makes it difficult for people to walk well, and in many cases, people have um, a displeasure with their appearance. It's an example of a form follows function in that normal alignment both looks normal but also has optimal function and optimal wear uh, in terms of preventing arthritis from developing in the knees. The discussion needs to start with an understanding of normal alignment parameters. A line from the center of the hip to the center of the ankle shown on the left side goes right through the center of the knee in the normal patient. That is normal alignment. You can think of that line as being the way force is transmitted through the knee. And if it goes right through the middle of the knee, then there's equal force on the inside and outside parts of the knee. People who have knock knee deformities or bow leg deformities have deviation in that weight bearing line. This is an example of a large knock knee deformity. And what you can see here is a graph that helps to understand the way force is transmitted across the knee. If you look at that orange line, you can see that with a knock knee deformity of about 10 degrees, the force on the lateral side of the joint, the outside part of the knee, increases from what is a normal of 400 newtons to about 1,200 newtons, about a three-time increase in force on the outside part of the knee. And at the same time, the inside part of the knee um, is experiencing almost no force. So deformity overloads the respective compartment of the knee. This is another example of a more moderate um, knock knee deformity. You can see the way the knees sort of hit and forces a wide base gait and stance. This is the, the uh, long x-ray. And this patient has still a very healthy knee, but is starting to develop pain on the outside part of the knee. In surgery, we do a distal femoral osteotomy, which is a osteotomy or a bone cut on the, outs on the distal part or the bottom part of the femur, which is the thigh bone. And what you can see here is that we do a partial cut in the bone and we wedge the bone open the number of degrees that we've planned for the correction. This is the outcome and this is after both sides having been done. You can see the plates and screws are maintaining the position. The bone heals very, very nicely. This is the before and this is the after. And improved aesthetic appearance but more importantly, improved function, improved um, force across the knee, and a significantly decreased risk of developing arthritis and pain in the knee as she gets older. Getting back to our more severe deformity, uh, you can see here that there's already development of joint space narrowing on the outside parts of the knee joints by, by seeing the uh, decrease in the joint space. If you look at the long x-ray, the line from the center of the hip to the center of the ankle is very much deviated from the center of the knee on both sides. And in this particular case, the deformity is coming from both the femur and from the tibia. We use applied geometry to calculate the magnitude of the deformity correction in both the femur and in the tibia. And the plan is to do uh, fixator assisted tibial osteotomy and distal femoral osteotomy. This is, these are some pictures from surgery showing the osteotomy of the tibia, the use of blocking screws and a uh, external fixator that's used intraoperatively to help uh, with the deformity correction. And this is what it looks like at the end of the surgery with the plate and screws having corrected the distal femur and with the rod in the tibia. 
And this is what it looks like about six weeks later after correcting the left side. You'll notice that the hip to ankle line goes through the center of the knee now, unloading the lateral joint compartment. The right side still needs to be done. After the right side is done, you can see the difference from the before to the after. Again, notice that the lines go right through the center of the knee. Now, I want to show you an example of a patient for whom we used external fixation. Um, this woman gave us permission to show her face. And um, you'll see on these x-rays, she has knock knee on the left side and some bow leg deformity on the right side. It's a large deformity creating uh, pain and difficulty walking, um, particularly of her left knee. This is after the deformity correction using external fixation. Uh, the indication for external fixation was that it was a large deformity in the tibia. You'll notice that the lines from the center of the hip to the center of the ankle now go through the center of the knee. The left side had a knock knee deformity corrected and the right side had a bow leg deformity corrected. This is what it looks like wearing the external fixator, which is a circular hexapod type frame and the before and the after. A very significant improvement in the aesthetic appearance, but again, more importantly, functional pain and also a big improvement in, uh, in terms of decreasing a major risk for developing arthritis in the future. I want to thank you for your attention. I hope this has been helpful as a primer in understanding the surgical realignment of knock-knee deformity.